Control of gene expression is different in eukaryotic cells and bacterial cells. First off, in many bacterial genes, they are organized into operons, which are transcribed into a single RNA molecule. Second, the chromosome structure affects gene expression in eukary eukaryotic cells. The DNA must unwind before transcription can take place. <clears throat> Thirdly, the presence of nuclear membrane in the eukaryotic cell separates transcription and translation in time and place. Transcription occurring in the nucleus and translation occurring in the cytoplasm. We're going to be looking at chromosome structure, initiation control, control at the pre-mnRNA processing, and translational control. Sorry you can't see the bottom section of this video. That's my bad. Let's take a look at chromatin remodeling complexes, which bind directly to particular sites on the DNA and reposition the nucleosomes. There's two mechanisms by which remodeling complexes reposition these nucleosomes. The first one causes the nucleosome to slide along the DNA, and the other complexes cause conformational changes in the DNA, in the nucleosomes, or in both, so that the nucleosome assumes a more exposed configuration. It has been said that DNA sequences are targeted to specific chromatin remodeling complex. And there's also evidence that chromatin remodeling complexes work together with enzymes that alter the histones. So, the chromatin remodeling complex binds the DNA and it repositions the nucleosomes, exposing a transcription factor binding site. Once that happens, the transcription factors in RNA polymerase bind to DNA and initiate the transcription. Now let's look at histone modification in which a positively charged tail domain interacts with the neg negatively charged phosphate groups. One type of histone modification is the addition of methyl groups to the tails of histone proteins. Enzymes called methyltransferases add methyl groups to specific amino acids, and um, demethylases remove methyl groups from histones. This kind of modification can activate or depress or repress transcription depending on which amino acid it is added to. Pre-existing histone modifications and RNA molecules serve to recruit histone-modifying enzymes to specific sites. One example is NERF. Another type of histone modification is called acetylation, which an acetyl group is a CH3CO group, which is added to histone. This acetylation of histones usually stimulates transcription. There are also two types of enzymes, acetyltransferase, which add acetyl groups, and deacetylases, which strip uh, acetyl groups from histones and restore chromatin structure to repress transcription. So positively charged tails of nucleosomal histone proteins interact with negatively charged phosphate groups of DNA, but the acylation of the tail weakens their interaction with DNA and permits some transcription factors to bind to DNA. Now, do not confuse histone modification um, with DNA methylation. DNA methylation is most common on cytosine bases adjacent to guanine nucleotides. Methyl groups are removed before the initiation of transcription, and methylation appears to attract deacetylases, which remove acetyl groups from the histone tails, stabilizing the nucleosome structure and repressing transcription. Transcriptor activator proteins have two distinct functions of binding to the DNA at a specific sequence in the regulatory promoter or enhancer. And they also interact with other components in the apparatus to influence the rate of transcription. Now, transcriptional regulatory proteins in eukaryotic cells um, influence initiation of transcription by affecting the stability or assembly of the basal transcription apparatus, but some regulatory proteins are activators and stimulate transcriptions, while others are repressor repressors that bind to silencer and inhibit the initiation of transcription. One of these is the insulator. So here the enhancer 1 can stimulate the transcription of gene A, but it is um, 
but its effect on gene B is blocked by the insulator. On the other side, enhancer 2 can stimulate this transcription of B, but its effect on gene A is blocked by the insulator. For the control of the mRNA, there are a couple ways um, that this happens. One is alternate splicing pathways that we talked about in previous chapters, as well as the degradation of mRNA. The amount of mRNA present determines what is available to translate, and unstable mRNA is degraded. Stability is M of mRNA is determined by the 5' prime cap in the poly A tail in eukaryotes. RNA silencing also leads to the degradation of mRNA by the inhibition of either translation or transcription. We've already talked about siRNAs and miRNAs, but there's one more that inhibits transcription, and that is RITS. So other siRNAs attach to the complementary sequences in DNA and attract methylating enzymes which methylate the DNA or histones and inhibit transcription. There are some examples in here that um, illustrate these points. The expression of some eukaryotic genes is regulated by the availability of components required for translation. Um, so T cells are normally in G, O, and not actually dividing. Um, but then an exposure to an antigen such as a virus occurs and causes an increase in the availability of initiation factors, which allows ribosomes to bind to mRNA and carry out translation. Protein synthesis increases 7 to 10 fold, which causes the T cell to undergo proliferation and activates the T cell.